Hi, I got you. It's Rorschach here. Are you ready for it then? Let's do it. Another Rorschach's comic book babe of the week. This is the video then where I look for the most boobalicious example of objectification in comic books today. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six comic books. We've got, let's have a look. And, Split up between Marvel and DC and the Antifa Indies. I've got one DC. I've got two DCs and one, two, three, four Marvels. Let's do the Marvel books first and see if we've got any babylicious, bootylicious, boobalicious action in the pages of a contemporary Marvel comic book. Spoiler. <laughs> oh! It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen during these NPC days of signalling to the, the blue check marks on Twitter. Particularly now, as lots of the blue check marks, being activists masquerading as journalists, haven't got anything to do during the day because they've all been laid off from their um, opinion piece jobs. So, Marvel Comic Books is not going to give. The traditionally young masculine readership of uh, comics what they actually want. They're not going to give, first off, aspirational masculinity, so you're not going to get that in Marvel Comics today, and secondly, um, more in keeping with the, the, the focus of this video, they're not going to give the young boys reading comic books, if there are any young boys reading comic books today, the, uh, the kind of female vulnerability and sexiness and need for the masculine that young boys traditionally got in comic books and is the reason why I am here today talking to you. If there wasn't any sexy ladies and aspirational masculinity in comic books back in the 1970s, I would not be talking to you about comic books. I would not be reading comic books. And who would be reading comic books? Well, no one really. I guess the, the, the writers and a couple of their mates. <laughs> so let's have a look at Marvel Comics first, shall we? Yeah, four books. First one, Journey into Unknown Worlds, which I've reviewed on my channel. I think it was the last video that I posted here, actually. All right, we've got one contender, I guess, for Babe of the Week. We've got an empowered scientist looking quite sexy in a hazmat suit, or whatever you call it. Uh, um, what do they call it? Is it a hazmat suit? I don't know. Um, there's a contagion. There's a virus, and uh, the, the suit that she's wearing is um, given her ample opportunity to display her assets. So that's quite nice, actually, for Marvel Comics. A sexy scientist. So, wow, a contender in the first Marvel comic book. Second Marvel comic book, Punisher, issue number seven. I actually quite enjoy this book. It gave me a good scope of area to explore how... Um, the goyim, the masculine goyim, is um, first off emasculated and then made to feel white guilt and to serve an agenda which he might not otherwise be serving. The only lady in this book is this uh, uh, malevolent nun. Um, she's not really the kind of Christian character that I would want to see in the comic books today. She's a bad guy <laughs> but she's not very sexy is she um babe of the week i don't think so miss none so no babe of the weeks in no contenders in in the punisher oh dead man logan a good book with an awful front cover just a bland front cover really i think doesn't really catch the eye in a way that a cover should do i think it's the the coloring and i'm not much of a fan of the artwork as well that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, femininity that you get in Marvel today. A, a, a lady um, pumped up with testosterone to such a ridiculous degree that um, it, it's laughable. Um, I don't know. I don't think much of yours, mate. Don't really want to go out with a lady who's got bigger biceps than me. It's a problem in, in, in comic books. Uh, we know that in the real world at least, that females are hypergamous. They want to marry up. They want to go with the alphas. 
and uh, the alphas in all the comic books are the females. There's a, a very small pool of uh, men that they're likely to breed with. And I think that subconsciously or not, it plays into the long-term agenda of lots of the, the global uh, um, lefties, the, the global corporate types who want people who look like me, basically, to stop breeding, to bring in their, their the dream future of um, caramel diversity it kind of starts to look like you're trying to ethnically cleanse people who look like me which might be one of the reasons why you're getting such a backlash against it and it doesn't matter how many times you delve into the past and try to accuse people like Liam Neeson he's the latest one isn't he of racism the Goyim is starting to wake up and, and see the, the agenda. I'll tell you what, the most rebellious thing you could do today if um, you're a, a young white man is get married, have children. That's it. That's all you need to do. Don't need to go on the internet. Don't need to be an activist. Don't need to be talking about things like me. Just uh, find yourself a nice um, young female, and there's plenty out there, who looks like you, um, have lots of children, and that's the way that you fight back against these NPCs. So, yeah, apart from She-Hulk looking like a man, and despite um, is it Sin looking like Gail Simone, I'll show you Sin looking like Gail Simone, and bossing all the men around, there is no females worthy of the uh, title of contender for, for Babe of the Week in Logan. Even though it's a good comic book, it's a Marvel comic book. No sexy feminine females. The last Marvel comic book of the week is by Ta Nahisi Coates. What do you reckon, guys? Do you think we've got any sexy young babes in this book? No, we have professional cat lady types. Everyone's very sad. Everyone's very professional. She's got glasses on. That means that she's intelligent. But there's no there's no sexy ladies, of course, in um, Captain America. Exactly what I'd expect from Tant Nahisi Coates. He's not going to objectify the females, is he? He's not going to give the young boys what they want. He's got an agenda. Just Google search his name. Look at his Wikipedia page. You'll see what this man is all about. And he's not about giving people like me or young boys who don't read comic books anymore Babe of the Week contenders. So nothing from Captain America. Let's have a look at DC. I've got two DC books. And the first one, talking about female empowerment, is Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman, she's a pretty sexy lady. But this book is being written by an NPC lady feminist. And she's, you know, writing what ladies want to want to read really she's uh, writing about cute animals who are stand-ins for immigrants really so the, the yeah, I know it's silly the um, the uh, the immigrants are, are fleeing persecution and Wonder Woman is going to, to help integrate them into the new country um, not the Congo not Nigeria they the the animals don't want to move to to those those countries strange really because you think that the Congo is not going to be suffering under the oppression of white supremacy. So it'd be perfect, wouldn't it? But no, all these immigrant animal animals appear to want to settle in America for some reason. Yeah, very strange, isn't it? How so many people want to um, emigrate to Europe and emigrate to America when these, um, these countries are dominated by evil white supremacists. It's almost like this evil white supremacist thing isn't actually a thing and is just a way of of shutting up and guilt tripping the indigenous populations into a replacement agenda which serves corporate and, and lefty elites. Almost like that, but that would be a conspiracy theory, wouldn't it? And you can't have any of that. So is there any Babe of the Week contenders in Wonder Woman? Uh, no, there's a there's a nice um, Bendis Sue, a new, uh, new character, who you're gonna be seeing a lot of in comic books today. I call them Bendis Sues because they are perfect young females, normally about 15 years of age, 15 to 21 years of age. They're normally scientific geniuses. They're morally superior 
to you and they are the future. And if you criticise them, racist, sexist, you know how it goes. This is actually going to be a problem um, for comic books in the future. Do you remember when people used to talk about Superman being too super empowered in that? Morally speaking, it was the perfect human being. So what can you do with a perfect human being? There's a um, you know, limit with, with Superman. The problem in the future is going to be these, these Bendis Sue types who are a little bit too perfect. And um, they're popping up in all the comic books. And this is uh, Female Furies. The future of the fourth world is female. Yeah, well, I would assume so. The future is also less and less sales and you don't really need to do a female furies comic book a book all about big barda because if you really want to have a standalone book about big barda just check out mr miracle by tom king because this book was more about how awesome barda was than anything to do with mr miracle who was completely cucks in, in the book anyway no babe of the week in wonder woman right so we've got one final book and don't worry guys it's a good one it's by clay mann the artist here so forget about the writing from you know tom depressed needs to see a psychologist king let's just have a look at the the sexy females we've got two contenders for baby of the week first is harley quinn very nice very nice indeed very sexy harley i can see why uh, is it mr j you call him has a thing for you it keeps coming back for more but i think this is just my opinion that the the best of the two, Arlie and Babs, is Babs. That is very very sexy, isn't it? So there we go. That's Bat's girl, Barbara Gordon, Babs to her buddies. Uh, definitely wins, in my opinion. The babe of the week. Nice one, Clay Man. This is what I want to see in the pages of my comic book and she's very empowered as well she there's nothing feminine about her which is um yeah usual in comic books so you're not going to get any female vulnerability you're not going to get any female needing the protection um, of a man in the pages of a comic book but at least we can get um, some sexy female form there uh, from mr clay man and i know he's driving the npcs nuts because he's he's doing this and I really, really do appreciate it. So congratulations to Clay Man, your boobalicious portrayal of Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, Babs, wins Rorschach's Babe of the Week. More of this, please. And less of... Uh, less of the, the perfect activist Bendis Sue's. That's what I want in, um, in my comic books. But it's not just for me, it's for the long-term health of the comic book industry. I got into comic books because I was 12 years old. I like looking at the sexy ladies and I liked reading aspirational moral masculinity. If you're not going to get that in comic books today, how do you think, and I'm talking directly to the comic book industry now, how do you think you're going to... Um, replenish your readership as the years progress i'm not immortal i'm looking pretty good for my age but i'm not immortal i'm not going to be around here forever i'm not going to be going to the comic book store on a wednesday in 40 years time i might be a bit bit uh, on the rotty side by then um what's going to happen when Evil white supremacists like me don't buy you comic books anymore because it's people like me with the ridiculous beards who are buying these books. And when we no longer exist, comic books will no longer exist, will they? You need to start appealing to young boys, in my opinion. What's yours? Please let me know in the comments down below. I'll end the video there. Thanks for checking it out. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you'd be so kind. I'm off to the gym. Hopefully my prediction of me not being around in 30 odd years will be incorrect and I'll be a, an elderly 100 year old Rorschach talking to you here on YouTube about why comic books still suck. But uh, we'll see. Uh, that's it, I think I'm babbling now. Cheers guys, take care, catch you all later.